March 15th through the 19th, lesson number one in module two. We are going to be looking at distributions and their shapes. Um, we're going to, our whole goal is to learn the vocabulary um, that will help us to describe the shape, the center, or the variability of the distribution um, based on dot plots, histograms, box plots, that kind of thing. All right. Um, so let's go ahead and look at this first paragraph. It says that statistics is all about data. Without data to talk about or to analyze or to question, statistics would not exist. There is a story to be uncovered behind all data, a story that has characteristics, plots, and problems. The question or problems addressed by the data and their story can be disappointing, exciting, or just plain or ordinary. This module is about stories that begin with data. All right, so let's look at example number one. Data are often summarized by graphs. The graphs are the first indicators of variability in the data. Dot plots. A dot plot is a plot of each data value on a scale or number line. So go ahead and look at that. They give us an example of a dot plot. All right. They've taken all their data and they've put a dot where all of that data is. All right, then we have what we call a histogram. All right, a histogram is a graph of data that groups the data based on intervals and represents the data in each interval by a bar. All right, histogram of ages for Kenya. Notice that they've got zero to 10. Well, it's zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15. So they put it in groups. It's no longer just everybody that's age one, everybody that's age two, everybody that's age three. They group zero to five together. All right, then we have what we call a box plot. A box plot is a graph that provides a picture of the data ordered and divided into four intervals that each contain approximately 25% of the data. All right, and we're going to talk about um, these types of graphs a little bit more in detail as we go. Think of each graph as telling a story. Each graph is telling us a story. Um, graphs of distributions are often the starting point in understanding the variability in the data. And the graphs in the following exercises are going to be analyzed in more detail in the lessons that follow. All right, so let's go ahead and look here at our questions. So it says, answer the questions that accompany each graph to begin your understanding of the story behind the data. Transportation officials collect data on flight delays, the number of minutes past the scheduled departure time that a flight takes off. Consider the dot plot of the delay times for 60 big air flights during December 2012. Alright, so look at that dot plot. What do you think this graph is telling us about the flight delays for these 60 flights? Well, guys, if you look at this, let me kind of scooch in just a little bit. Um, they want to know what do you think we're being told here? What do we notice? Well, we notice that there are some flights that are 120 minutes past time. But I want to know what is the main thing, what is it telling us about the flight delays? So what can I, if I were trying to tell somebody about this flight, what would I say? Well, I would see that the majority, most flights, are delayed for 15 minutes. Most flights are delayed for 15 minutes. But I do want to put in there that some are delayed for a longer time. All right. 
I don't want everybody to think that they're just going to be 15 minutes past the time they're supposed to take off. So I need to put in there that yes, most of them are about 15 minutes, but some are going to be longer. Can you think of a reason why the data presented by this graph provides important information? Who might be interested in this data distribution? Well, why would this be important? It's going to be important because if flights are late, then travelers are not going to select this airline. can choose from. I don't want to choose the one that's late. I want to choose one that's going to be on time. So who might be interested in this data? Well, Big Air, the, the company, might be in, uh, interested in travelers using this airline. your previous work with dot plots, would you describe this dot plot as representing a symmetric or a skewed data distribution? Recall that a skewed data distribution is not mound shape. Um, remember, um, symmetric means that if I fold it in half, it should be about the same on both sides. I don't see that here. I see this to be skewed because it is taller to the left uh, it has a tail to the right, so we call this a tail. Right, it has a tail to the right. All right. All right, let's move on to the next. A random sample of 80 viewers of a television show was selected. The dot plot below shows the distribution of the ages and years of these 80 viewers. What do you think this graph is telling us about the ages of the 80 viewers in this sample? Well, looking at this, where am I finding most of my data? Most of my data is in the upper areas, so that the typical age of a viewer is between 60 and 70. All right, so our typical age viewer is between 60 and 70. Now, another thing that I could say is the show does um, appeal to a wide range of ages. because I do have people all the way from like 5 to 80 or to 75. Can you think of a reason why the data presented by this graph provides important information? Well, they want to know the audience of the show. All right. It's important in understanding the audience. Who might be interested in the data distribution um, if they pay for commercials? So um, the sponsors, the sponsors would be um, interested in this because if, you know, so my wide range of people is 60 to 70, I'm not going to, um, want to advertise something that's geared more towards younger people. 
Based on your previous work with dot plots, would you describe this dot plot as representing a symmetric or a skewed data? Well, look, most of my dots are up here, so it's skewed because there is a tail to the left. It has a tail to the left. All right. Now we're going to look at histograms. The following histogram represents the age distribution of the population of Kenya in 2010. What do you think this graph is telling us about the population of Kenya? Well, look at the large population um, is ages 10 or younger. The largest population is 10 or younger. Why might we want to study the data represented by this graph? Um, it tells us about Kenya. It tells us the challenges um, that they go through. Um, maybe it would help us to figure out reasons why the largest population is 10 and younger. All right. So um, it tells us about Kenya. may lead to a solution. As to why the greatest population is 10 or younger. Last question here, based on your previous work with histograms, would you describe this histogram as representing a symmetrical or a skewed distribution? Once again, it is skewed. And it has a tail to the right. All right. A lot of my data is here, and then it kind of goes off in a tail point to the right. distribution of the population of the United States in 2010. All right, what do you think this graph is telling us about the population of the United States? Um, well, guys, if you look at it, um, the, the percentage of the population is about the same in each interval until we get to about 60. All right, then it starts to decline. Why might we want to study the data represented by this graph? Um, it might have something to do with health care. All right. Maybe um, education challenges, businesses such as insurance companies. All right. So there's many different reasons that we would want to study this data. 30 students from River City High School were asked how many pets they own. The following box plot was prepared from their answers. What does the box plot tell us about the number of pets owned by the 30 students at River City High School? Um, well, let's look at this. 50% um, of the students own between one and five pets.
how do I know that? Because this right here is my 50%. This box is my 50th percentile. So I'm looking at somewhere between one and five pets. All right. Why might understanding this data behind this graph be important? Um, maybe they want to plan special events around pets. Maybe they want to plan some special events. All right, let's look at this one. 22 juniors from River City High School participated in a walkathon to raise money for the high school band. The following box plot was constructed using the number of miles walked by each of the 22 juniors. What do you think the box plot tells us about the number of miles walked by the 22 juniors? Well, I can look at it and see that 50% walked between four and nine miles. All right. Um, I can look at the 25% below. 25% um, walked between one and four miles. All right, and then I can look at the last 25%, and the last 25% walked between nine and 11 miles. All right, so this is my bottom 25%, this is 50%, this is my top 25%. All right. Why might understanding the data behind this graph be important? Um, it's going to show you the participation of the junior class. Shows the participation of the junior class. All right, so statistics is about data. All right, graphs provide a representation of the data distributed and are used to understand the data and to answer questions about the distribution. All right, guys, um, this is lesson number one. We'll pick up with lesson number two.